so uh, I'm going uh, to talk about case marking in convertible morphology. And uh, before I proceed, I would like to remind those of you who maybe do not remember uh, where the Nick language is spoken. So it's spoken in the Russian Far East on Sakhalin Island and on the mainland on the map, uh, this area is shown as a red one. So it's a Paleo-Siberian language, which is considered to be isolated with ethnic population, some 5,000 people and with about 50 speakers left. So the language is highly uh, <clears throat> endangered. Uh, if we think about uh, any varieties, so uh, we can look at this picture. Every time I show this picture, I add another variety. So which means I'm still uh, not sure where to draw the border between them. But anyway, uh, uh, we can think that uh, NIF represents nowadays a continuum of different varieties. Uh, number one, okay, provisionally, it's number one, there is no reason behind that. So it's except for geographical probably location. So uh, uh, one of the varieties is spoken in Lower Amur. So another in Amur Liman, West Sakhalin, North Sakhalin, East Sakhalin, Central Sakhalin, and South Sakhalin. So South Sakhalin variety is considered uh, to extinct. And uh, if we need to do, draw the uh, borderline between these varieties, so we can do it uh, uh, like on these slides. So uh, the first two varieties can be roughly united into uh, uh, an idiom, which is even, can be even called a separate language. And the other three varieties spoken on Sakhalin into another idiom, which is, uh, can be also treated as a separate language. It's not that relevant uh, for uh, my talk, though I will show you some examples from different varieties, mostly from the Amur variety and the East Saharan variety. And you will see in the brackets uh, to which variety uh, uh, one or another example belongs, and I'm not going to talk in more details about that. Okay, so let's start with convertible morphology. And uh, uh, what I mean by convertible morphology, I use here a very uh, uh, <clears throat> popular definition, uh, which was uh, made by Haspermath, that converb is a non-finite verb form whose main function is to mark adverbal subordination. This is what uh, NIF converbs do. And in general, uh, synchronically, NIF is very convertible language. It has about 25 converbs. And uh, comparing to Aino, about which uh, Anya was talking about, uh, it's uh, very different. but it it's, uh, looks the same like in the Tungustic languages, which are spoken around the Nick language. So I will come back to this point later. But the idea is that uh, it's probably uh, those converbs which developed in Nick uh, were developed under the influence of Tungustic languages. Especially uh, the system of temporal converbs is developed. So uh, uh, 12 in Nick and 14 in Nick. So as you can see, really an essential part of converbs <coughs> marks the temporal relations. So if we look at a typical uh, sentence, uh, especially in the text, so we will see that it represents a chain of clauses and the verbs are interlinked uh, by different semantic relations like temporal, conditional, concessive, cause, purpose, manner, and so on. And it is uh, the whole chain is closed by a finite form. So it's kind of full stop. This is a typical example. You can see as soon as the child saw an angry dog, the child started to cry of fear. So here we have this yellow formed Shiba as soon as the child saw. Uh, this is the converb. And then we see at the end of the sentence, uh, a finite verb form, Polacht, cry. So you can add different converbs uh, into this uh, chain and uh, then uh, uh, the last form will be finite. <clears throat> Historically, it's a nominalized form, but this is not that important again. Okay, so now we're having, we will look uh, into the converbs and we will see uh, uh, what is the part of the converbs uh, or the cases in uh, convertible derivation. So how you build basically a basic converb in NIF? So you take a verbal stem uh, and then you have a convertible suffix. Uh, this is like a synchronic thing. Then you 
have another possibility. You take a verbal stem, you add a nominalizer, and then you add a case suffix. This is another basic type of building a converb, and such uh, converbs are called in the literature sometimes quasi converb. So they are almost like uh, those which are syntactically perceived to be without a case suffix. However, if we uh, look into more details into the first time, uh, it's very, uh, uh, very often we can see that historically there used to be also a nominalizer there. And the converb suffix is probably also historically some kind of nominal element which was added uh, to verbal stem. But in many cases we cannot see it uh, anymore and uh, we cannot reconstruct uh, uh, this element. However, in many cases, like in type two, we obviously see that we are dealing with a nominalized form, which is marked by case suffix, and this form serves as an adverbal element in the sentence. So let's have a look at an if case paradigm. Here, are, uh, several, you can see a basic cases. So nominative is unmarked, like many other languages. Uh, then we have dative, instrumental. Uh, locative only in their more variety, ablative, perlative, and destinative, also comparative, but we're not very much interested in that. So if you look at uh, the suffixes of these uh, cases, you can see that dative and destinative are clearly connected in the element toho and toh. And if you look at the ablative and perlative cases, you can also see that uh, they are uh, uh, connected obviously with each other historically, oh and oh here in all varieties. So uh, uh, among these cases, almost all participate in the uh, derivation of converbs. As you can see, all these all these elements, all these suffixes of dative, instrumental, ablative, prolative, uh, and destinative cases, we can find them uh, in their converb structure. What about nominalizer? So uh, there are several nominalizers in NIF, but if we talk about converbs, two of them uh, participate in uh, converbal construction. So locative F, so you can see how it works. So layer play, you can uh, form a noun layer place for plane, and then you can form a converb layer for yeah, while she or he was plane. Uh, another Nominalizer is ng. Uh, this is used uh, for two purposes, mostly for uh, uh, deriving participles, for forming participles, and also for agentive nouns in some cases. So uh, let's have a verb nama uh, uh, be good. Nif doesn't have adjectives, so nama uh, is a verb in nif. Namang good, uh, this is a mm, attributive form, and then namangisk, thou, she is, was good. So uh, this is how we form uh, the converbs with the nominalizers and with um, the case markers. Uh, I have to say a few words uh, about um, uh, historical things. So we have to say that uh, uh, NIF, uh, uh, the Amur variety of NIF has undergone a general nasal loss. And as a result of that, this uh, nominalizing has disappeared from the Amur variety, but it still defines the quality of the initial stop of the following case suffix. So it is there in the uh, <coughs> historical structure. So when we look at the form Ngamankin in the Amur variety, it actually uh, synchronically looks like Namagin, and we see uh, that there was a new nominalizer, nominalizer there because the is a voiced uh, obstrand here. In the East Sahalin variety, uh, the voicing also took place, but the nominalizer stayed. So thou, she was good, uh, thou, he or she was good. What other additional elements can be uh, within the current verb? First of all, it can be a desiderative suffix preceding the nominalizer. For instance, we in if toho until he or her, when somebody goes, went. There can be a future suffix before the nominalizer, we in if toh, in order to go. And uh, there can be a relational noun uh, used after the nominalizer. This is what Anya was probably talking about her cases. So this is also it. Rang uh, irngoh, uh, while is uh, somebody's was drinking. As you can see, this is of course very uh, 
very transparent form. However, it is rather grammaticalized. So we actually do not think about the word irn like really time. It's the same is with the uh, noun tar, a middle in the form rataruch here. And this is from the Amur variety. We do not see the nominalizer here. So both of them are already perceived as uh, rather grammaticalized forms as converbs. <clears throat> there are also some other elements, but I'm not going to talk about them more. Okay, uh, what are the semantic types of these quasi-converbs? Uh, temporal, causative, uh, purposive, and also concessive, marked with different cases, as you can see. Uh, let's have a look at the, some examples. So. Uh, how would uh, derive the temporal converb with the perlative case? You see uh, uh, three uh, the different forms uh, uh, historically connected. We have some different outcomes uh, here, as you can see in the converbal markers, but apparently they all come back uh, from the same case form uh, perlative. So uh, example, the first one, so I ate the seal meat for a long time and got used to it, nifke. So all of these forms have a durative meaning. Something took place for a long time. So it comes also from this probably case uh, uh, semantics, uh, perlative going along something, through something. So uh, here it is. I was eating for a long time and then got used to it. The next example, yuroke uh, and so on. While reading, I almost choked with saliva. So yuroke, again, the durative converb here. Uh, with the market care, uh, a very, a very, uh, a very, I would say, uh, uh, um, the form which we often see in the examples uh, with slightly different, uh, different meanings. <clears throat> okay. Uh, uh, here is the kind of temporal convert which is derived with the destinative case. Uh, uh, in the more variety, we have different forms of that. In the Sahalin variety, only one. And uh, this converb normally also have uh, the future marker inside, then nominalize of uh, and then destinative suffix. So here, uh, toho, so until dark, until the dark started or <laughs> was established. This uh, looks uh, very much like uh, a nominal form. In this particular example, with the case marker, but still, uh, in uh, other examples, and also here, uh, we can think about it as an adverbial element, <clears throat> as a converb. Uh, here are the examples of temporal converbs which are uh, uh, derived with the ablative case, but also with relational nouns, earn time and tar middle. I give you. One example, uh, when I broke the window, they flashed in the sky, uh, when broke. Uh, so chosk break, nominalizing a time and then ablative. Uh, I gloss it here uh, with all three elements in order for us to see the internal structure. But uh, nevertheless, I consider it as a quasi, at least a quasi convert here. <clears throat> uh, Causative or purposive converbs are uh, uh, formed with the dative case. So here it is toch. And then again, there can be a, a desiderative suffix before the nominalizer for, or future suffix before the nominalizer for. Uh, here is the example because you talk to me like that, I'll not let you to go to the cinema. Clive toch, toch, a nominalizer. And then we have. Uh, mm, uh, uh, locative dative or dative marker. So uh, because you talk, uh, this is our converb. Uh, concessive converbs are marked with the uh, instrumental cases. Here, though, uh, I have to say that uh, it's a little bit this form gisk, uh, uh, which comprises the nominalizer and the instrumental suffix gisk. If we look at the form of the suffix, it's a little bit different uh, uh, from the case marker, which is kiss, but I think still that they are related to each other. And in the Amur variety, uh, the same story we have, so we do not have a nominalizer, but we have a voiced uh, initial consonant. 
Uh, also, it's a little bit uh, different from what we have in the case market, but still I think uh, they are connected with each other. Here is the example, though it was raining, it went to the forest, though it was raining, Kyrgyzk. So, uh, no, um, a quasi-converb here used for certain <clears throat> purposes. Okay, so uh, here are some conclusions. I have to say that so we can see and we've seen that uh, NIF converbs uh, display uh, various degrees of grammaticalization, also uh, dialectal variation. Uh, this can reflect uh, different layers of underlying historical processes. And we've seen that they are really transparent forms of um, uh, converbs uh, with uh, with uh, uh, easily defined segments and elements. There are less transparable forms, uh, less uh, uh, more grammaticalized. And if we think about other converbs, which uh, at least synchronically do not comprise any case suffixes, uh, uh, then those forms are probably the oldest ones in all this process of formation of, of, uh, of converbs. In general, if we think about how these converbs were formed. And if we look around at the languages uh, uh, which surround the NIV, so we can uh, clearly see that uh, NIV follows the aerial patterns of convertible formation. So uh, I have here the example from Evenki. Uh, uh, we can see how temporal converbs, a couple of examples of temporal converbs, which are uh, uh, derived uh, in the Evenki language with the dative, case or with locative. The structure is a little bit different, but uh, the whole idea is more or less the same. Uh, you have a verbal, <clears throat> a verbal element, you have participle, uh, which can be compared with the uh, nominalized forms in, uh, in NIV. We have a dative marker and also here, for instance, a reflexive element, a plural marker, all this means while walking or uh, marked uh, uh, with locative. So we have again uh, the uh, verbal element, uh, particip participial element, uh, locative case marker, possessive and third person singular after he had come. Uh, NIF doesn't have uh, these uh, possessive markers or uh, number markers on the adverbs in these cases, but uh, uh, the model for, uh, for deriving the converbs is very similar. So uh, we can say uh, that probably all these uh, uh, developments, which continued in NIF for a quite a long period of time, apparently, since we have different stages of this process, so uh, demonstrates that NIF follows the aerial pattern of convertible formation, unlike, for instance, Aino, which uh, wasn't covered by this wasn't touched by this process. And also, uh, if we think about the whole process of altization of NIF, uh, which we now again took place apparently under the influence of uh, uh, Tungusic languages. So here we can easily see that it is one of the most transparent and probably one of the oldest stages in the process of NIF altization. So uh, it, uh, uh, the whole system of uh, deriving convex with case markers uh, is quite an old one and uh, gives us a good clue on different historical place uh, processes which took place in NIF. Thank you very much. Thank you, Katie, for your talk. Uh, now questions or comments? We have 11 minutes for questions. I see Anya has a question. Really? I'm chairing myself. Okay, okay, good, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's it's Go a very brief clarification question. You mentioned in the very end that uh, there are no plurality markers on uh, converbs. So there is no gu uh, uh, on converbs. Is that right? Yes, this is right. But of course, uh, I am a little bit uh, simplifying. Uh, the story because there are converbs that agree with the subject in number, but there are different type of converbs, such uh, such converbs in which we cannot see any case markers involved synchronically. But no, of course, you cannot add any any plural marker to the converb. You cannot add anything 
So, mm -hmm. so I, and this is the, just... this is differentiate them. Sorry, from uh, 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 the proper nouns. Yeah. So, <clears throat> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, any more questions? I can see any hands. I see Natasha. One. No. Natasha, okay, yeah, okay. I'm sorry, I'm chairing myself. Yeah, 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 perfect, perfect, yeah. I, I'm, sorry, relax, I, I'm relaxing, yeah, okay. Okay, okay. Natasha, you're welcome. I have a brief clarification question. Uh, uh, do I uh, understand uh, you um, uh, correctly? Uh, you uh, propose that uh, the, this pattern uh, itself uh, is uh, borrowed uh, from Tungusic or other Altaic languages, but uh, do you uh, think that uh, the uh, semantic uh, rules themselves uh, can be uh, also somehow uh, borrowed, calced uh, from Tungusic? At the first glance, uh, they seem uh, very, very differently from uh, those uh, we uh, attest in Tungusic languages. So uh, Tungusic languages also use uh, these uh, nominalized case forms, but very different uh, case forms to express uh, diff um, different uh, um, uh, semantic types of uh, converbs. Uh, for instance, um, mm, uh, for, for instance, uh, dative uh, uh, marks, uh, temporal uh, converbs, uh, or um, instrumental uh, is also temporal, and uh, destinative is uh, um, used to mark uh, purpose. And your uh, set of uh, functions uh, looks very, very uh, different, uh, or not? Or do you uh, see uh, here also some parallels? Uh, yes, thank you very much. This is a very good question, and I was expecting that <laughs> to tell the truth. Yes, and uh, from the specialists on music languages. Uh, yes, um, my my whole idea when I think about how uh, Nif was Eltas Eltas is uh, <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, so it seems like if if such hypothesis is correct, that uh, the whole influence. Uh, if there was an influence definitely from Tungusic languages or maybe even by some other uh, surrounding languages, it pertains mostly to the structural things, as you said. So, but on, if we in general look how to, all these verbal forms were developing in NIF, we see that uh, the language was playing with uh, nominalizations. So it seems that uh, 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 the whole system was uh, restructuring, I wouldn't say all the time, but maybe even several times in the history, as far as we can trace it back and see uh, all with these nominalizations. I think this is uh, the most obvious thing which unites uh, the, uh, it, this apparatus with the story of which is typical of Tungusic languages. But you are absolutely right. If we look deeper, uh, at uh, 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 the mechanism how these case forms are used with converbs or quasi-converbs, how we call this is different. But uh, this may be also connected uh, with different history of case marking as well, how these, uh, these uh, uh, systems and paradigms were formed. But uh, uh, again, it's difficult to guess what was, how it was developing. So I would agree. So on a level of structure, it is, it is similar mostly on the level of structure, not on the level of semantics. <clears throat> Thank you. Any more questions? Waiting for questions or comments? So, so. Am I right that uh, there are no more questions, no more comments? So if I'm right, we uh, thank Katya 
for most interesting presentation. Thank you. And uh, as far as I know, we uh, we have a, a break now, right? Uh, Sonia. Yes. Yes, 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 we have okay. we have a break for one hour. One hour break. For, uh, lunch God. break. <laughs> lunch break. Great, great, great. Okay, so we'll meet each other with uh, in, in an hour from now. Okay, thank you.